Nathan Leverton, welcome to my Total Grappling video series. The subject of this tape is the half guard, both the top position and the bottom position. The main focus is going to be on no gi submission wrestling, but the techniques and tactics will cross over to mixed martial arts and your gi grappling as well. I hope you enjoy the tape. Okay, let's start by looking at what the half guard is. Basically the half guard is having one of my opponent's legs trapped between my legs. Let's take a look. This is basically my half guard. I have one of his legs trapped. If he was in my full guard, he'd be either between my legs, here, or my legs would be between us, here. If he was past my guard, he would be free of my legs in a side position, or any kind of top position like the mount or the knee on stomach. For me to have the half guard, I have one of his legs trapped, and one of his legs is free. Now some people call this the half mount for the top position because it's halfway past. I prefer to call this a half guard, either top or bottom. The half guard is a position that happens a lot when you're wrestling. It can happen from takedowns, guard passing escapes. Let's look at some of the common ways that this will happen. First of all is from a takedown. I have Paul in a clinch and I'm going to try and take him down and he catches one of my legs. Yeah. I have this leg trapped and now I'm calling his half guard. Another example would be when I'm trying to pass his guard. I'm in his guard, I'm starting to pass, I make a mistake, and I get one leg passed, but one leg still caught. It can also happen when he's trying to escape pins, maybe I'm in a side control. I'm here, he starts to work onto his side, and he might just trap one of my legs. Here. Same when I'm in the mount. I'm in a mounted position, he gets on his side, starts working his elbow in, and he traps one of my legs. There's a lot of different ways you're getting a coin in a half card when you're wrestling. So you better make sure you know what to do there. This is part one of the tape, which is going to focus on the bottom position. We'll start by looking at the perfect posture to have underneath and the details of that, and then we'll look at how to achieve that posture. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, the posture that I want to have, I want to be trapping his leg above his knee, I want to be on my side, with an underhook and my other elbow in. We'll take a look at this from both sides. Okay, this is the posture that I want. Paul sits up for a moment. I want my near elbow inside. Okay, I don't want him to have his knee up inside my arm. Here, I need to have this elbow inside so I can work on his leg. I want an underhook underneath his other arm and around his back. I want to be on my side. If I'm flat on my back, I'm going to be pinned and I'm going to be carrying all his weight. I need to be on my side. He's my hip down and my shoulder down. Here. If I'm trapping his leg, I can figure four, I can cross my ankles. Okay, there's all different ones I can have. My main trapping leg is the inside leg. I'll move around so you can see. Okay, my main trapping leg is this leg here. If I can control with this, I can use this leg free to move around and work different techniques. This is fine, this is fine too, but this is the main controlling leg. So I'm hooking above his knee, I'm going to be on my side with an underhook and my elbow in. This is the posture that I want to have. Now we know the posture that we want when we're in the bottom position of the half guard, let's cover how we're going to get there. Okay, how we're going to achieve this posture. The first thing is getting on my side. If I'm flying my back to get on my side, the big thing is moving my hips. I need to work my hips out to the side. But at the same time as I do that, I need to pull my shoulder underneath. A lot of people leave their shoulders flat on the mat so they're still carrying all the weight. To get on my side, once my hips move, I need to pull this shoulder underneath. Okay, this is how I get on my side. Oh my god. I'm in this half guard here, I'm flat on my back, I need to work my hips, work my hips, and pull my shoulder underneath. This gets me on my side. The next thing I want to look at is how to get this elbow in. If his knee's in tight, okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it by his hip. Don't pull it into his leg, just turn and twist here. Pull it to the mat. I pull this into my hip and wiggle onto my side. The next point is getting my underhook. We move around. If he's nice and tight, I'm going to try and work this into his face and into his jaw. I'm going to drive here with my arms and then feed my arm 
underneath to his back. If he's quite tight, I don't feel I can get this, and the moment I let go, he's going to be able to get back on top. I'm going to shrink my hips out here to make some space, and then come underneath. Let's see that from the other side. Okay, my opponent's pinning me. I get my elbow in, I get onto my side. Put my forearm in his throat or in his jaw here. I drive up and work my arm underneath around his back. If he's a bit tighter and I feel he's going to get his weight back on me straight away, I shrink my hips out first. Still trap him with me on the side leg. Get underneath and then pull him in nice and tight and bury my head in the chest. That's how to achieve my posture. The first technique we're going to see is how to regain your full guard. This is going from half guard to your full guard. This needs to be your base technique. Anything goes wrong, you can go back to this. If you're not comfortable in the half guard, go back to the full guard. This is what you need to be able to work from different positions. We're going to start from this perfect posture with the underhook and the elbow in. I'm on my side. I'm going to get my arm around the back and get my elbow in. Okay, again, I've done it from here. I've pushed and I've come in and I'm on my side. Any time I can get my elbow in, I can get the full guard. I can lever his leg out and pull my other knee in. Here, from there I straighten up and he's back into my guard. Okay, so trap his legs down. I'm going to use this elbow inside his leg here to make a bit of space to pull my other knee through. Here, once I pull it up to my head, I need to straighten up. Here, and he's in my guard. If he's got the underhook himself, and I haven't managed to get this arm under here, okay, uh, usually I can't get my elbow in, so he's nice and tight, he's holding my head here, and I can't get my elbow in, I'm going to use my hand here, and I'm going to shrimp, I'm going to shrimp out to the side, shrimp out, and then back. I'm either going to grip around his head, or if I can, I'm going to frame on his throat here, and again I put my hand down, and I shrimp, and back into the guard, let's see that from the other side. I've not managed to get my underhook, so I'm either going to hold the head or forearm across the face. My other hand goes on the knee, and I'm going to shrimp out here, and then come back into my guard. Any time you go for the guard, you need to work and use that guard straight away. Don't go to guard and just lay that flat on your back or a pass. As soon as you get to the guard, you're trying to sweep him or submit him. Okay, let's take a look at one more way to get the guard. As your opponent tries to hook my head, I'm going to go underneath his arm. Here. Control with my forearm in his armpit and my other hand on the hip, and I'm going to shrimp in this direction. Here. And then put him back in my guard by straightening up and raising my knees towards my chest. My opponent reaches for my head, I'm going to bring my hands in like this underneath his arm here. Okay, ducking under. I duck my head down and push over one hand on the tricep, forearm on his armpit. Using both hands, one in his armpit, one on his hip, I'm going to shrimp. Away from his ribs, and then straighten up. And as soon as you're here, you need to be working. For your attacks. Don't just go there and lay in the position. That's regaining guard. Now we're going to cover the foot grab sweep. Okay, this is one of my favourite sweeps from this position. I have my good posture with my arm underneath and my elbow in. I've made space and come underneath. This works well any time your opponent's free foot is near your legs. Maybe I've tried to pull my leg in to get guard. I'm trying to pull this thing and he's pinching your leg so I can't get in. Or maybe he's hooked his foot inside my leg here, inside the thigh here, to work a pass. Any time that foot's close, I can do this. I need to shrug with my shoulder and scoot down around his legs. Okay, getting my ear towards his chest. I'll create a bit of space now just so you can see, but I need to be really tight here. I'm going to reach with my forehand as far as I can to his ankle here. From here, I'm going to come out to my knee, face with my hand and drive him backwards. And then I pass the guard. So he's in the posture, I make space and come underneath. I'm going to scoot down and shrug with this to help me get down. Here, get my ear to his belly, and I grab. I need to come up onto my elbow and do that to get, the, to get the grab. I base out with my hand, push off my hand and get my knee down to the mat, and I drive him backwards. 
Okay, don't drive them this way because you'll base out with the hand. Drive them backwards. If as I start to get down, and I grab this, his, his knees out and I can't drive him over, I'll grab his knee and pull his leg in. Here. To get the sweep. If his knee's too far to grab, I'm going to use my other feet to pull his leg back here. Okay, so if we move around this way so you can see, I've scooted down, I've gone for the ankle, but his knee goes far out and I, I can't get it. Use the soles of my feet on his foot to pull his foot back and drive him over. Let's see this from the other side. how to regain your guard and one of my favourite ways to reverse someone or sweep someone. Now we're going to take a look at how to get their back, how to get behind them. This is one of the worst positions you can be in. Now there's a quick warning with this. Often when you go for people's back they just turn and this is something you need to know. Often when I try and get behind him he will just turn and I'll end up in his half guard and you need to be aware of this. It will happen a lot and then from there you need to be able to pass his guard which we'll be looking at later. It's just something to be aware of. Let's look at two variations of how to get his back. The first one is when he's already got his posture, and it's as soon as I get my posture. As soon as I push this arm underneath here, I'm going to shrug it up and I'm just going to scoot down towards his feet. So this drives up and I duck under and tuck my chin in. Here, to get under his arm. Then straight away, I'm going to reach under his forearm, stop and turn him. Okay, so if he tries to turn to his back now, here, I'll, I'll hold on to this. I can put my hooks in and work for your back. Let's see that from the other side. He's got his posture. I work my arm in, and as I drive this up, I scoop my arm under. As he goes here, I push and scoop down. Getting my head underneath and coming to my elbow. I'm going to reach under his forearm to stop and turn it to his back. And I can put my hooks in and work for the choke or flatten him out. You can also work with the back once he's sat up. If I've got this here and he feels I'm going to throw him up and he sits up a little bit, sometimes you're here. I'm going to put onto my elbow, I'm going to raise my elbow up like this and weave my head under. So I pop my elbow up and weave my head at the same time. Never try and get the back without ducking the head. I just try and get behind here, he's going to grab my head here, or I'm going to end up him rolling onto his back again. So from here, he's sat up a little bit because he felt me want to throw him. I'm going to pop my elbow and weave my head here, underneath. And then again, I don't just want to let go because he'll be able to roll. I want to catch under his arm, either go for his neck straight away, or insert my hook and go for the back. Let's see that one from the other side as well. I've already got my hand hook. He feels that I want to go behind, so he sits up a bit here. I'm basing on my elbow, raise my other elbow, and weave my head under. Pop it up, weave it under. Grab the far side to stop him turning, and get up with my hips up behind him. Here. And then show him or hooks him. That's two ways of getting the back. He's low. As you get your arm wound up, throw it over and scoot down. Or if he sits up, come up onto your elbow, pop and weave your head to take the back. Often when you try and take your opponent's back, he will overhook your arm to stop you ducking underneath and sit back to stop you getting behind. So now we're going to look at some counters to this common position. Out of my underhook, and as I click on to get around, he's wrapped tight around my arm for me to stop me getting underneath. Try to get around the back, I can't get it. 
The first thing I can do is go back to the sweep we did before. Get my knee that's between his legs on the mat, here. As I do that, I reach for his leg with my hand, grab the knee, and then I pull and drive. And then pass the guard. So again, my hand's behind his back, and he's wrapped my arm so I can't get around. I'm basing on my hand, I must bring my knee out so I can get a base. Here, still trapping his legs, but I'm on my knee. I'm going to dive for his other leg with both hands. Here, head in his chest. Pull and drive. To pass the goal. So that's the first move. When he overhooks my arm, get my knee out and drive to the foot grab sweep. Again, we're in the position where I'm trying to get around his back and he's hooked my arm. Instead of taking him this way, I can also take him back. I often use this when he's based out with his knee a little bit and I, I can't quite get him over or I feel that he's strong. I wrap around the back and this hand is going to reach underneath his shin to his ankle. Curl into a ball underneath and then roll him back. Hold on to the shin, shake my other leg free and pass the guard. See that again. I reach around his back, he's hooked my arm tight. I can't get behind. Grip underneath and I've got to tuck myself underneath. I won't go to sweep out here with my head and my body out. I need to tuck underneath. Keep hold of the leg and roll. To the pass. Do not try and bridge with this. If you bridge, you will pass. If I put my feet down to the bridge, he'll bring his foot over. Let's see that. If once I get his leg, I try and bridge. He will step over. Okay, I need to keep hold of the leg and roll. Control the leg, shake my other leg free, and pass. See another variation of this. I can't get hold of the ankle, sometimes he'll base out with his foot. He's got my arm tight again, he bases out with his foot here, a bit further out. Okay, this often happens with the mixed martial arts when someone's trying to strike you from this position. I'm going to reach underneath at the hip, not the knee, at the hip. Again, curl myself underneath and sweep him over. Pressure on the leg with my arm, shake my other leg free. Everything we've done so far, the foot grab sweep, the regaining guard, the take in the back, the roll, all these combined together. Okay? If I'm trying to get guard, I can go to the back, and I'm trying to go to his back here, and I, I can't get behind him, I can always just come back to my guard. If I'm trying to roll him and that doesn't work, then I will take his back. This is a move that I like a lot. When you try and roll, he will base out with his hand. Shook with his hand, scoot down. Here, to take his back. Do that again. I'm going for the sweep, reaching it as I go, face is out. Push with my hand and come around behind. Hooks in and then take the back. As we said before, the regaining guard is your base. Any of these don't work, you can try and get your guard again. But all the others mix together as well. For example, again, I want to go for this sweep here. It doesn't quite work, I can come up and grab and drive him over try to combine regaining guard taking the back foot grab sweep and rolling them backwards so far we've seen the key positional aspects of bot position good posture how to achieve that posture regaining guard foot grab sweep taking the back and then the counters and the counter counters so when he overhooks your arm or grabs your head let's take a look at some submissions now first one is a kimura this technique works anytime your opponent puts a hand on you if I push in his knee here and he pulls my wrist off or I'm using my elbow 
or I'm trying to bring my leg through and he puts a hand on that to stop it. I grip the wrist and I've got to pass my arm over the top and grip here. Don't just pull it up because you'll just grab his shorts here. When you get this, pull it into your chest first. Pull it into my chest and take it behind his back here. Once I have this, I need to raise his elbow up to tighten his shoulder and then I push the hand over. See that again. This usually works when you've got a bit of space. If his head's in tight, it's hard to pass my arm over. So usually I'm working here and I'm trying to bring my leg through. He's pushing on my leg and he's trying to stop this. And I tie this off. Pull it into my chest first here to clear the hand free. And then take it behind his back. I'm flat on my back, raise his elbow, and then push his hand. Sometimes when you do this, your opponent will try and roll. Let's see this from this side. When I get it, I must keep hold of the leg. If I don't keep hold of the leg, he will pass. Here, which I don't want to happen. I need to keep hold of this. If I do, he may try and roll over. That's okay. Keep hold, keep a good base. If I'm here, I'm going to raise his elbow up and just apply by twisting his arm. So I raise the elbow up and then I rotate. If I can free my leg, then I just go to the normal side control kimura. Here, or here. So let's see that again. Anytime my opponent's hand is on this side of my body, I can grip his wrist and pass my arm over. Pull to my chest and apply. If he rolls, stay tight with him my leg if I can. And Kimura. That's Kimura from the half guard bottom. The next submission from the bottom is a leg lock. It's a knee ball. My opponent has his underhook. I've not been able to get mine under. It works from both but we'll do it from here. Make the frame on his throat and I'm going to insert my fore knee on this, onto his hip and his belt line. Which we'll see from the other angle in a moment. I'm going to hook the leg at the same time I'm going to let my forearm slip here and I'm going to pull and duck. Here. Push with my knee and my hand while pulling on his leg. And finish with the knee ball. So once again he's coming down. I'm going to block with my forearm. Shin on the belt line. Under the arm. Under the leg. Same time. Pull with this and duck then push with my hand and my knee together. See this from the other side. I'm trying to create a frame. Keep his weight off me a bit and just make enough space to get this in. He's just shrinking my hips and trapping with my inside leg. I bring my shin in. This helps keep his weight off me. Go under the leg and under the arm. Duck my head. Push with my forearm on my hand and push with my shin. Here, to off balance. Then I'm going to reach up and grab his heel. Here. Turn my hips into his knee. One foot tucked, this foot on his buttocks. Straighten his leg. And push with my hips. I need to straighten this out, pull it straight, and drive my hips forward. If I don't feel I can get it, if maybe his legs are a little bit bent, I'm going to grip his heel and rotate here. I do this with the knee bar anyway. As I get the knee bar, I'm going to pinch his toes between my neck and my shoulder and rotate the heel a bit which will top the knee as I push my hips in. Let's see the whole move again. Create the frame to keep his weight off me. Bring my shin in. Come underneath the arm and underneath the leg. I need to duck and push with my forearm and my knee together here to keep him off balance. If I can't quite get his leg, if he's strong here, I'll grab the heel here there's no use pulling on this, this will not straighten his leg. I grab this here. This will allow me to pull and torque his leg here into the knee ball. Shin across, come underneath the arm. Here. Either just off balance him or if he's strong, grab this and pull. Here, or just grab this and then into the knee ball. Let's see another leg lock from the bottom. This time I can't underhug his leg because he bases out. Maybe I've already gone for the knee bar here and he bases his foot out. Here, so I've missed his leg. 
Or maybe he's just gone to this position anyway because he wants to sit up and work a pass from there or strike it, which makes martial arts. I need to get to his foot, I'm going to dive for it. Here. I'm going to wrap around the calf and grab his toes. My hips come underneath and I'm going to apply the toe hold towards his buttocks. Here. If he did straighten his leg and this did work, I'm just going to come up and work from the back. So he bases out with his fourth top. Yeah, and I'm going to dive for his leg. I'm going to dive for it and try and hook over his calf. As I get here, hips underneath. Hips go underneath and I turn and drive with my whole body. Grab with the thumb. Here. Okay, if you can zoom in on that a bit. Grabbing with my thumb here, okay, to get a better grip. And I'm going to rotate and twist with my hand as I figure for it. Push it in. Flexing the top of the ankle. Here. Let's see the whole move again. Maybe he's set up in my half guard, he's based out here. Okay, he's, he's, no, he's, he thinks he's got a good base. He thinks I can't grab this leg. I'm going to dive, bring this hand over. Here. Wrap tight. Put my hands on the toes. Figure four as I put my hips underneath. You will never pull him from here. You'll never pull this, but if I scoop my hips underneath and then drive with my whole body, I can put him down. Grab him with my thumb, apply the toe hold towards his buttocks. Make sure you put a bend in his leg so it's fairly weak. If his leg's straight here, you won't get it. Bring it in. If he does happen to straighten it, here I can grab the heel, pass it over, and come around to his back. That's the toe hold and the half guard bottom. Still working from the bottom now, we've seen the standard half guard with taking the back, different sweeps and different moves and then some submissions. The position we're going to look at now is inserting the outside hook, sometimes it's called a half butterfly guard. Let's take a look at it. It works when I have an underhook, but it works also when he has his underhook, and this is when I tend to use it. He's very tight here and I can't get my arm in. I'm going to shrink my hips out and bring my foot inside here. I'm bringing my outside foot inside his thigh. So once again, he's got me nice and tight. I can't get my underhook, I can't get my arms in. I'm going to shrimp away, trap him with the inside leg still. And insert my hook. There's lots of other times you can get this as well. If he strains his leg or he steps upon his foot, you can get it in. Sometimes people strain their leg. My hook goes straight in. Okay, so I've heard people feel you pulling the leg in, they try to wiggle it straight. Hook him. Also, if he comes up onto his foot, insert my hook also. Whenever I get this hook, I need to keep the other foot trapped. Sit up on please. With my hook inside, my other foot must trap on his calf. If I don't, he will just pass. So first of all, I must trap. Secondly, my hook will stay stuck to his leg. Again, if this is off and I don't stick the hook, he will pass. But if it sticks, if he tries to free his leg in any way, I can just reverse him. So this is the half butterfly guard. I'm going to shrink my hips out to create space, tuck my heel to my butt, and just circle my foot in. I trap with the other foot and I keep this hook stuck. If he tries to move at all, I can follow him. Let's take a look at some techniques from this position. When we started with the standard half guard, the first thing we showed is regaining your full guard. And that's what we're going to do now as well with this half butterfly guard. When I want to move him with this hook, don't push away with the hook. You know, your leg will be weak. If I push away with my leg here, it's away from my body, so I can't take much weight on it, and it's easy for him to pass over it. Pull your hook in towards your body. Always pull it in. So he has it on the hook, it's in nice and tight. Here, I've got my hook in on the far side. I'm going to raise my hook towards my head and slightly in this direction. If he doesn't want to go over, he's going to base out with his knee. But even if he doesn't, I've still created space. Here, he doesn't want to go over. So this is enough space for me to pull my other knee in, and then I'm going to sit up and get my um, butterfly guard. Here. See that from the other side. So 
work my hook in, pull it towards my head and over this way. Yeah. Bring my other knee inside this gap. There's a nice big gap for me to bring my knee in towards my chest. Straighten up and sit up straight away. As we said before, as soon as you get your guard back, you need to attack. Don't just go to here in the settle like, oh, I've got my guard back because he will pass. As soon as I get to here, try and sweep or go for a submission. Let's see the full technique again. As before, this is your backup technique. Anything goes wrong from this guard, you just pull your butterfly guard. Hook in, trap in his leg. I pull my hook towards my head, bring my other knee through, sit up, and then from here I just attack. That's regaining guard from the half butterfly guard. Back in the half butterfly guard now, we're going to look at a sweep. Have my hook in and I'm trapping the leg. He's in nice and tight. Control my head, control my arm. I'm going to try and get guard first. I'm trying to lift to get guard, but he's keeping this knee in. He feels that I want to get my other leg through. So I'm going to block his knee because it's close. I'm on my side. I'm going to pull my hook towards me in this way. Keep the leg pinned. And pass. Let's see that from the other side. He's keeping his knee close. I'm going to pin it from the side, pull my hook towards me, and sweep over. Keep the leg pinned so I don't end up back in his half guard. Pass. And around. See that once more. He's pinning me down. I've managed to shrimp and insert my hook. Now, his leg's quite close. I'm going to pin it. Sweep him over with my foot and pass. If your base is out, I've got a couple of options. Now often he'll put his knee out when I start to go here. Now I've missed it. I can either pull my guard back or I can put my knee in and sit it up. Or I can continue with the sweep. If I can continue with the sweep, I've got to keep following him on my side using my other foot. So base is out as I try and sweep him. Okay, I'm going to use my other foot on the floor and I'm going to hop after him. Hop after him. All the way to the mount. See it from the other side. He has good position on me, but I've got my hook in. I try and sweep, but he bases out. I'm going to use my other foot to push off and follow him. I need to keep following him, driving with my foot, pulling it towards my head. And then I can just pass into the mounted position. That's the sweep from the half butterfly guard. Now let's cover a couple more uses for this half butterfly guard when my opponent's got a slightly different posture. He's in my half guard, but this time he's going to turn onto his side and overhook my arm. Okay, so he's blocking my head now, he's overhooking my arm nice and tight. Maybe he wants to go for a Kimura here or, or some of his passes, okay? So he's overhooking my shoulder. I'm going to insert my hook. The first move is to sweep. I'm going to grab around the neck, pull it in tight, and again lift my hook up. Okay. From here I can finish with a choke. Or just pass his guard. Do that again. Turns onto his side, passes his arm over. I'm going to grip, insert my hook. I'm going to pull tight around his neck and lift my hook at the same time to reverse him over. I'll just do that from the other side. Sweep when he changes his posture, and I've got the half butterfly guard. Another technique now from the same position. I'm going to go for the sweep, but he's going to resist back this way. 
As I feel this, I put my hand on his thigh. I'm going to try and lift him with my hook in the air. Pass my other leg to the outside, and then go behind for his back. See that from the other side. As he's elbow, I'm going to do the side of my head, and I have my hook in. I want to try and sweep him this way. Of course, I could always go back to guard. I could just pull him back into my guard here. But as he goes, I feel him resist back. I'm going to push up on his leg. I'll free my other leg. And then I can go behind here to work for his back. So that one last time. I go for the sweep. I can always regain guard if I want, but he re resists back in, I lift, bring my leg around, and go for the back. That's taking the back when he resists the sweep from the other posture. Still with a half butterfly guard, we're now going to look at the submission, the heel hook. To do this, I need to get under my opponent's arm. It can be done low down or when he's sitting up. For now we're going to look at when he's coming down and keeping a good posture. I'm going to try and get underneath his arm. Same again, both hands underneath, frame with one, push with the other. Yeah, same as when I shrink to guard. I'm going to push with both my hands hard, try and push him over in this direction. At the same time I turn and lift my foot up. Here. And then your hook. See that again. Foot frame. Then try and get both hands underneath. One forearm in the armpit, I push with the other hand. Push hard with my hands and turn my hips. Bring my knee up, foot comes over, and the heel hook. To get the heel hook, make sure there's a bend in the arm. I pinch his toes behind my armpit, hook the heel with my wrist and bring the heel towards my far shoulder. Be very careful with these heel hooks because you're applying pressure to the ankle and to the knee. Here. If you want, you can always switch and take the Achilles. Or sit up into the toe hold. But this is the move I prefer here. We'll look at him now when he sits up. Okay, my opponent's sat up and I've still got this hook in. I don't want to stay down here, I want to try and sit up. As I sit up, I'm just going to push him to the side. I can drag his arm here, or just cup it, or just push. And I want to push him hard over to the side as I bring my foot over. Again, I hook the heel, keep a bend in the leg, pinch my knees together, push my foot hard on his belly and heel hook or Achilles. One more time. Put my hook in. If he's sat up a bit, I'm going to push him as hard as I can over to one side and shrimp to face him. And bring my foot over. Heel hook. And from this angle when he's coming down one. Forearm in his armpit. Pass over. Push hard and turn. Bring my foot in on his hip and heel hook. That's attacking for the heel hook from the half butterfly guard. So a quick summary now of the standard half guard bottom. Perfect posture, trap his leg, arm around the back, elbow in and I'm on my side, always on the side. Here. The way to achieve this, if he's clinching me, I'm going to use my forearm on his throat, shoot my hips, pull underneath. I'm working my hips out, working my shoulder underneath, always to get on my side. First technique from here is regaining the guard, which is your base technique. If my arm's underneath, I use my elbow, pull under, and then straight away, I'm going to try and attack him. If he's underneath my arm, here, he's grabbing my head, then it's hard for me to use my elbow, so I'm going to use my hand here and this arm around the neck, or frame if I can. And then again, I push, shrimp, and back underneath to my guard. If he's reaching for my neck, I'll pass underneath, put my hands here, shrimp up, and then come into my guard. Okay, so that's different ways of regaining the guard, and that's the posture. First attack we looked at, from the hook, I shrimp down, grab my ear on his chest, grab the leg, and sweep. After the variations of the sweep, we looked at taking the back. Either just coming under and popping down, or if you sat up a bit, and based on the elbow, and 
weave my head here underneath. The main defence is for him to wrap my arm so I can't get behind, so I can sweep him backwards, go back to the foot sweep, taking him this way. I'll be basing out with his leg. I come and take this one and roll him over. He's wrapped my arm again. Anytime I try and roll him back, he stops with his hands to, to stop him rolling over. Here, back under inside the back. He can also grab my head. If I'm really far behind, he can grab around my head. Here. If we're up high, then I'll just roll him backwards again. If we're low, I'm going to bridge. And then roll again. That's all the positional moves. Then we look at submissions. First thing is any time I can grab his wrist and come over, I'll put it into my chest. And then Kimura or rolling Kimura. He sits up. I can bring my shin in, under the leg, grab the heel, pull up the knee bar. Or if he's based out with his foot, here, I can apply the toe hold. That's all the techniques from the basic closed half guard. Now a summary of the half butterfly guard. For my normal guard, he's got the arm locked, I'm going to shrink and insert my hook in. From here, I can elevate him by pulling my hook towards my head and it's bring my knee back in for the guard. And sit straight up into a butterfly guard. If his knee's quite close, I can't quite get that, I can start to work the sweep. I come up, if you base it out, I'm going to roll and hop with him and pass his guard. When he changes to a different posture by bringing his arm on the far side and turning onto his side, I insert my hook again, grip around the neck, sweep, and then pass to the choke, or just pass his guard. Again, he's in his posture. Okay, I feel him resist, I push his back in, I free my leg, and go around to the back. And the last technique from here was the heel hook. Forearm, in his armpit, clear the arm, push hard, put the foot over, and heel hook. And if he's sat up in the same position, here, if I'm working in this and he's sat up, so I can't, I can't lift, he's put his weight on this, I'll just push him over and bring the foot over. That's the end of the bottom position. Two different ways of doing the bottom half guard. Your regular close half guard, and with one hook in the half butterfly guard. Okay, I'll try and mix and match the techniques, combine them in your own ways, Get sparring with it. Make it work for you. Part two of the half guard. Now we're going to be looking at the top position. We looked at working from underneath. Now we're going to look at when you're trapped in his half guard. As with the bottom, the most important thing on top is your posture. There's three main postures we're going to be using throughout this, the rest of this tape. Underhooking the head and underhooking the arm is the first one. That's posture number one. Posture number two is underhooking both arms and grip around the back of the neck. Here. Posture number three is having my elbow on the far side. I'm turning onto my side, just tilting and overhooking his shoulder. The posture that I go for first is underhooking the head and underhooking the arm because this allows me to drive his head, get him flat on his back, push against his chest. What I don't want is him on his side. On his side. This is the position he wants. Okay, we saw this before. He wants his elbow in, on his side, underhook. So what I want to do is I want to drop my chest down low and drive my chest into him. Don't put your weight on top. Put weight on top here, he's still on his side. I need to drop down and drive my chest into him to put him on his back. Use your hips, keep your hips low and drive in in this action. Okay, at the same time I'm going to hook his head with my bicep hitting into his face, cross facing him and I'm going to try and pummel this one underneath his arm so I drop my chest I hit him in his chest, drive him onto his back 
cross face him here and underhook. Keep my hips down. If he starts to get his underhook, I'm going to pull back. And if he starts to get his arm underneath, I'm going to work this one underneath. And then again, drive him flat on his back. Once I get this posture, I need a lot of pressure with my shoulder in his throat. So, okay, so he's on his side. I drop, I drive in with my chest, keeping my hips low, cross face, and try to get my underhook here. Now, just move your arms. Okay, I don't want my shoulder on his, on his jaw here. I want it on his neck. And to do that, I'm going to drop my shoulder here and run it up. Okay, so once I'm here, I drop my shoulder back and I run it up into his throat here. Okay, the pressure's up there to make him tap. At the very least, you want to make it uncomfortable for him. If you can make him tap, that's great. So I'm in nice and tight, I drop my shoulder back and I run it into his throat. Yeah. So let's see this again. He's caught half guard, he's on his side. Okay, he's caught his half guard. I drop my chest, hook his head, and drive in. My shoulder comes back and I push it into his throat. That's the very first thing I want to do. Get good posture. Once we've got good posture in the top position, we need to work some guard passes. There's a lot of submissions I can do from here, but you really want to get good at passing first because then I could go for the pass or take a submission. If I only know, say, a leg lock, yeah, he might be better at leg locks than me, so I need to be able to pass the guard. The first pass is a basic hook pass, hooking my foot inside his thigh. This is a very, very high percentage move, and it's going to be your basic pass. Okay, if some of your other moves don't work, you can go back to this. It's the first thing you want to attack with. He's got me his half guard. I've lowered my chest, hooked his head, underhooked his arm, and got pressure on his throat. Make sure you keep a lot of pressure on the throat. You want it uncomfortable for him, and you want him to forget about the legs a bit. So as soon as this is here, I'm going to put a lot of pressure here. I'll relax a bit while I'm teaching, just so I don't hurt him, okay? But while I'm actually wrestling, I'm going to put all my pressure here on his shoulder, okay? On my shoulder, on his throat, all the time. I'm going to base on my other knee and hook my foot in. Here. I pressure hard with my hook. Pressure hard and spread my legs and spread his legs as much as I can. Straighten my right leg, shake it, pass it over. Or if his legs up, I bring my knees together and I circle. Let's see that from a better angle. Okay, it's got my leg trapped. I'm going to pressure hard with my shoulder, really hard, make him forget about this. Foot hooks in. Pressure hard and spread the legs as much as I can. Spread hard with this. Shake this leg straight. Don't keep it bent here, it's not going to go anywhere. Straight. If this leg's low, pass over to the mount. But if it's high, I bring my knees together and I pivot, keeping the, my right knee to his hip. Let's see for another angle. Pressure hard with my shoulder. Hook my foot in. Press down hard with this hook, make pressure on the legs. I said, look, I'm just hook this in, try and free the leg. I've got to pull his legs apart as much as I can. Pull, pull, pull. Shake this leg straight. If I don't keep it straight, you're going to hook this foot over the back of my leg still. Here, okay, I won't get the leg free. I need to pull and straighten and wiggle with the leg straight. Here. Then I pass my knees together and pass his goal. If I feel this hand against my leg or against my hip here, grip, sit through to pass. Let's see this one more time. Good posture, pressure with my shoulder. Put my foot in, wiggle my leg straight and spread his leg. Here. I pass his guard into side control. That's your basic hook pass. It's your fundamental pass, you need to be working all the time. It's your first move to go for, it's high percentage. Sometimes when I'm attempting the hook pass, the hook will come free and you'll get your foot caught. Let's see what to do then. Okay, again, I've got good posture. Controlling the head, shoulder in the face, pushing my chest down, underhooking his arm. I've started to work this pass. I've got my leg up. Yeah, but sometimes the hook comes free and he just wraps your ankle really tight here. 
Okay, I can try and get the hook back in, but sometimes I might off balance myself. So I'm going to drop my knee to the other side. Here, keep my hips low so I don't get rolled, and I'm going to use my other foot to keep kicking and get my leg free and sit through. Let's do that again. Again, lots of pressure on his neck. I want him to forget about his legs when I'm uncomfortable. I'm going to pressure in, pressure in, pressure in. Drop the shoulder back and roll it in. Hooking in. Trying to get the leg free, but it just catches the ankle. But my knee's still free. My knee's free. I drop it to this side here. And then I use my feet to kick. I just pull my foot out and sit through. And then I'm in a modified scarf hold. Again, I'm going to be trying this hook pass, but this time his hand, his free hand, is going to be pushing on my knee. I'm trying to work this hook pass, but I'm having trouble here. He keeps pushing against my leg, and he's going to be trying to get guard, and this is, this is creating problems for me. So when this hand's here, I'm going to reach back underneath his arm to get double underhooks. Grip my hands together behind the back and flare my elbows here. Now, if he tries to push my knee now, he can't reach it because my elbows are flared. I need to put my head down on the other side when I work this pass, but for now I'm going to keep my head up so I can talk and you can hear me. Once I've got this, first thing is I just work this hook pass again. I just get my foot in, pull down on my hook, wiggle my other leg straight here, and then I come up and I pass. When I've got this, sometimes maybe his legs are quite high, his knees are pinched, I can't get my hook in, I'm trying to keep my base. Okay, I'm basing out here, and I can't get a hook. I'll just come up onto my feet and wiggle my legs. Here. I want to get my knee as high as I can. Then I can either hook, to pass, or drop to kick free. So let's see this again. He was on his side originally. Come down. Guren wants his back. I want to start working this. But this hand's causing me trouble. He keeps trying to push. I'm going to bring my hand back. Come underneath his arm. Here. Grip behind the neck. Elbows apart. Flare them. Head down. Either do the hook pass. Or if I can't get my hook in. I just wiggle. Come up to my feet. And wiggle my legs. with this grip and then coming under and hook pass in and if I can't get my knee free stand up and wiggle and then you can get your hook in. This next pass is where my opponent starts to turn onto his side or he starts to get an underhook. I like to use this pass a lot and underhook the leg and wiggle my leg free. He's got my right leg trapped. I start to try and come in for this posture but either he's got onto his side here or he started to get an underhook under my arm. Here, either of these work fine. I'm going to reach back, get inside the leg as deep as I can. I'm going to try and pull my hands together. I'm going to wiggle my right leg. And pass his guard by driving him onto his back. Let's do this from this angle here, okay? Again, I'm always pressuring with my shoulder. I'm always putting pressure on his head. I'm trying to get my underhook, but he turns onto his side. So I'm trying to drive the his back, it's not working. Reach back, inside his leg. Push with my hands, together and behind him, and wiggle my right leg, wiggle it free. Keep pulling with my arms, drive him onto his back, to pass his guard. This also works when he's got this underhook. Now I don't want him going behind. We saw before, the overhook in his arm can make me be swept, and leaves me open to some moves, but if I reach back, with the leg, you can't get those. I'm going to pull as hard as I can with this and wiggle with wiggle this leg free. And then either just drive or if he's still slightly hooking my leg, I will throw it over and drive him onto his back. Let's see this from behind. Pressure in his throat. He starts to get onto his side. Underhook his leg, nice and deep. Wiggle my leg straight. Pass. And drive him onto his back. That's the underhook in the leg pass. 
We've seen a few passes now. We've seen getting under the head, under the arm, and you can do the hook pass, or you can drop your knee across and use your other foot to free your leg. We've seen how you can double underhook, come up to your feet, wiggle your legs to free your knee, and then again do the same two passes, breaking across or the hook pass. And then we've seen underhooking the leg when it turns onto his side. Let's take another one now, I'm going to put my shin on his chest. Again, I've got the head underhook, and I'm going to hook the arm, pressure with the shoulder always, keeping him off flat on his back as well. Now, I'm going to put my hands down, I'm going to pop my knee up to his chest here. At the same time, I'm going to roll onto my hip. I'm going to pull with my hands and push with my knee in his chest here. Okay, very, very uncomfortable for him. Most of the time here, people think they can roll you. And he tries to roll me, never going to go anywhere because I just scoop my hips back. If he puts his legs down to try and bridge me, I just pass his guard. Just taps the legs back. If this doesn't happen, I use my other foot pull my leg free, and again if he still tries to bridge, I just put it flat on his back. Let's see it from another angle. My leg's trapped. Put my hands down on the mat, I'm going to pop this knee up onto his chest. And I sit down on my hip. Don't roll to your back, because then you probably will get on top. Keep on the hip, hip down. If he tries to just move me over, I'm going to scoot my hips away. Yeah, just move my hips away. If he's opened his legs, then I'm past. Nine times out of ten, people will think they can roll me from here. So he will try and get me over. Pressure with my shin, and pass my foot over. If he still keeps it trapped, I'll either go back to my hook pass, here, or if I feel it, I just put this foot on the knee, and I rip it out, and then that's my side control. Move this way so you can see a bit of the knee pressure here. Hands down, pop my knee up. I'm going to grip my hands together as I roll. I'm going to pull and push with my knee, drive my knee into the centre here as I pull with my hands. Very, very uncomfortable. This usually allows me to pass his guard because he's going to open his legs and try and get away from me. If not, I just keep him nice and tight. If he tries to roll me, I just move my hips back and free my leg. I'm going to use this leg as well. When I try and free my leg, this one blocks. And I pull my leg free. Trust my leg. If I want to put this one here, I can do this. I just bring it up. I said, keep this foot back. Don't be on top of him when you're going to get rolled. My hips come back. Put my foot on and rip the other one free. If you try to get on top, I can just switch to side control or I can mount. Try to come over. I can mount. And if he tries to bridge, you will never do it with his legs crossed. If he tries to put his feet down and bridge, I hook and I'm past. That's the knee on the chest, pass from the half guard top. Now I'm going to cover a different posture when I'm in his half guard. We've seen the first posture where I put my shoulder in his throat, underhook his arm. We've seen double underhook in both arms. In this last one, I'm going to bring my elbow over to the side of his head. I'm going to turn onto my hip, bending the other leg to keep a base. I'm going to use my leg and my elbow to pull back to bow his body around here. Often the legs open and I can pass straight away. But I'm going to assume he's going to keep holding my leg here. Let's see it from the other side. I have my posture here under the head, under the arm. I'm going to reach over to the other side. Turn onto my side, keeping my knee in tight. I base out with my foot so I don't get rolled this way. If he tried to roll me again, I'd just pass. Yeah, if he tried to roll me again, I'd just pass his guard. Yeah, so I'm basically with my foot. I pull back with my elbow, pull back with my foot here to try and bow his body. I use this posture a lot when someone gets an underhook. If he's starting to get under my arm here, there's a risk of him getting around to my back. So what I'm going to do is I bring the elbow over, 
I pull his head back. Don't just pull his head. I sort of try and curl his body down. If he's starting to get onto his side, I'm going to sort of curl at his shoulder and pull and drive my chest down. Here, getting flat on his back again here, pulling his head back, keeping it off the mat. I pull back with my legs and pull back on his head. If he lets me get my knee out, I'm going to grab his leg and pass. I'm assuming he's good enough to keep this tight. Here, yeah, and I, I, I can't get this past, I can't get straight away. But I'm stopping him getting around my back and I'm putting him flat on his back. If I let's move from here, he's going to be Kimura. I'm tight, tight around his arm. Keep my base, keep my weight on him, always weight on him. Here, grab the wrist, bring it down to the mat. Bring the elbow this way, sometimes you have to work it up here because you're keeping your weight on him. As soon as he gets high, as high as I can, I'm going to rotate by pushing down his wrist and raising my elbow up. Here, for the Kimura. If you try to grip his shorts, don't just pull, pull up first. Here, okay, so his fingers rip out. Then down again, raise it, raise it, raise it as high as you can, and apply. Okay, so we're in my posture. Either he's got an underhook or I just want to go for this anyway. I reach across his head and I pull him. He's starting to get onto his side. Drive him flat on his back. Pull my leg back. Pull back on his head. I feel this arm's head wrap tight. Elbow to the mat, as tight as I can around this arm. Keep my weight on him. Grab the wrist, pin it to the mat, and grip. Work it up. Kimura. We're in the same posture again. I'm on my hip. I've got my leg bent. Pull him back with my elbow, pull him back with my leg. I've gone for this move here, but as I go, he starts to straighten his arm here. You can just go for the straight arm block by pushing down with my hand and raising my other elbow up to I press down his arm here. Yeah. Or flat out this way. Same as if you were in side control here. Usually as you go for that, he will bend the hand the other way. Though. As I go here, yeah, this will happen. You need to grip and bring back and pull down towards his hip and apply. With any of these moves, if you get a chance to pass, pass. Sometimes when you go for these, you'll put your feet down, it'll, it'll start to try and move with Because you've got a much more secure position if I can pass. And I can put it on. Same with the Kimura. Sometimes when you're doing this, you'll, you'll try and move, and you'll try and put your feet down, try and move about, then you just pass. Throw the leg over, hips down, and apply it. I'm much more secure here. So I've gone for this, he straightened his arm, I try and catch this, but nine times out of ten it won't happen. So it'll keep going. I'm going to pin his wrist down, and grab here. No thumbs, don't grip with your thumbs like this. Grip it out. Pull it down towards his hip. Don't turn like this, you just get rolled. Pull it down, pull it down, pull it down, and then raise my elbow up onto his hip. Here. So I pull it down, 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 against the mat. Keep this hand on the mat. And then just raise my elbow up towards his hip. Chest down, facing with my right foot, and on. If he straightens his arm from here, I'm going to use uh, the back of my hand to pull up, and grip underneath. And my head comes down. From here, I'm going to do my hook pass. And finish with a choke. So that elbow in, put him on his side, pull him in. Keep him flat on my back, me on my hip. I attack for this. Don't roll straight back. Elbow to the mat. Weight straight down. I pull. He straightens. I try and go for this. He keeps moving. In. I pin it. Pin it. In. I've got to apply this. He straightens it again. Pull it back. Feed the hand under as deep as I can. And then head down and grip tight. Keep this all tied off. And from here, I can either just work my hook pass or I come up, knee through push my foot over, then I can finish in the mount, or in the side. You're going to finish with this choke, pushing your bicep, it's tight against your throat here, and you're pushing this with your neck tight on this side. Tie it off, squeeze your arms together and push your chest down. Yeah. Okay, you want your bicep cutting off this side, his bicep and shoulder cutting off this side, and use your chest and your arms together. Let's go that one more time. I'm in this posture. I can attack for the Kimura, he straightens his arm. I've got a straight arm lock. Bring your chest down on this, don't do it from here. Chest down. He keeps going. 
Hit it, hit it. And with the key lock, he stretches it. Come underneath and then with the choke and the pass. It's exactly the same as you do when you're in side control. Now we're going to cover some more submissions. I've already started attacking this arm, now we're going to start attacking this leg. This person in your bar is when he turns onto his side. Turning onto his side here, I'm on the hook in his leg. I'm trying to get him flat on his back. I'm trying to shake my leg free, but I decided I just want to finish. Maybe he's getting quite far out onto his side here. If he's really far out, I'm up onto my other knee, put my hand on his head, I'm going to throw my leg over to here. I'm going to fall to this side. Don't fall to this side. If I fall to this side, he's going to be able to sit up, and he's going to get hold of me. And it's going to be a big fight. However, if I sit on this side, I can fall over his leg. If you try to sit up now, it's much more difficult. Grab the heel, pin it to me, straighten out my legs, push my hips in, pull his leg as straight as you can, and apply the knee ball. So again, I'm here. Been trying to attack this arm, it's not quite working. I'm going to start underhooking his leg. This works a lot when he starts to try and get on his side. Here, catching this. I want to put him flat on his back. I want to shake my leg free. But he gets really far out. And if I try and pass here, he's going to get to his knees. So I get to my knee first. Get to my knee. Put the hand on the head. And I'm going to throw my leg over. Here, sit on his hip and his abs. Make sure you sit on it. Then I fall to this side and grab his heel. Here, cross my ankles and cross my toes. Push your leg straight. Pull his leg, use your whole body. Don't try and pull with your arms. My whole body, as if you're deadlifting, you're trying to straighten your body. Here, pressure on the knee. Or the toe hold here. And the knee ball. See that from the other side. He starts to get onto his side. I catch his leg here so I can't get all the way around, but he's too far away for me to drive it back. I'm going to come onto my knee, here, hand on the head, on the foot, I just step over, I need to sit on the hip, I've got to make sure I sit on the hip with the arms, if I'm too far up here, he's going to be able to get his, his guard and get my back, okay, so I'm here, I fall this way, over his free leg, grab the heel, don't try and just pull here, grab the heel, straighten my legs and apply the knee ball. That's the first knee ball from the half guard. We've seen one knee ball from the half guard, and we're going to look at another one. Again, I'm going to have to underhug his leg. This works well when I'm trying to free my knee and keep wiggling his legs up above my knee. Here, when he does that, I'll catch it. Okay, I'm trying to free my knee. He brings it up. Oh, got it. Once I've got this, I need to create an area to get through. I don't want to get caught by this hand, so I'm just going to rip this out to get my arm underneath his. Or put it here, but I prefer to put it under his elbow here. I'm going to bring my shin up to his belly, cross his belt line, pull with my arm as I circle my knee as far around as I can. Don't fall to your side like this. Here. Get behind. Circle, circle, circle. Pull, 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 pull. Try to get my back towards the mat here. Pull, pull, pull. Then I can grab the heel. Foot comes free. Knee ball. Knee ball. So again, I like to set this up, because say I'm pushing this off my knee, pushing this off my knee, and then I catch it. This is a really good setup. I've not seen anyone show this before. See a lot of people say, oh, you get the arm under. His legs tight, you never get that. You never just drive this under. Just trying to push my knee free, and he's trying to recatch it, then I'll get it. Okay, well, so here I can always pass, I can always pass, but he's, he's quite tight, so he's got his legs, and I, I decide I want to finish. I decide I just, I just want to finish him. Bring my elbow underneath his armpit, into the armpit, wipe it out. I want to be able to get my knee here without his arm in the way. Come up, my hand here, bring my shin on his belly. You can, you can pressure here. Okay, this is very, very uncomfortable. So yes, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, it's not very nice here, okay? I can be pressing. I'm going to circle this knee around and turn to my back. Okay, I'm basing on my hand, my knee comes around and I circle to my back, not my hip, not my side. Pull and the foot will pop free. Grab the heel. Straighten. If you don't want to finish here, you can turn and heel hook. So I've got my knee bar and my heel hook. Let's see it from the other side. Won't 
up on Neil. Keep pushing this, keep pushing this up. And then bring it back under. He's keeping the leg, my leg trapped. Maybe he puts his heel on the floor here. Okay, so I, I can't get his leg out. Okay, if he had his leg out it's far away from me at all, yeah, this comes free. He might know what he's doing to put his heel on the floor here. So that's that's trouble. I, I can't get my foot free. I put my forearm in his armpit. Here, make sure this foot's tucked in. This foot's actually going to grab it, he's going to start trying to attack it, it's going to be in the way. Okay, so you tuck it in tight here. Turn around to my back. My foot is so tight now, there's no way he's going to get that. Grab my foot. Okay, he's just tucked right underneath. Pull, pull, pull. Grab the heel. Finish. Or finish with a heel hook. That's the second knee ball from the half guard. I see one more knee ball. Okay, this is the third knee ball. The first one I threw my leg over this way. The second one I brought my shin through. This time I'm going to throw my leg over. It's quite a fancy one. Okay, and there's a couple of guys who I train with who catch it quite a lot. You can put this forearm on the throat and come up to your knee. Yeah. As if you want to just pressure on his throat. Or you can pressure with this one, I pressure with this one here. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Based on my foot, I'm going to spin and sit on the hip by throwing this arm over. So this arm over, and I sit on the hip. Must sit. Don't just reach for this leg because you'll just stay where he is, keeping his legs on the floor. And you'll be, you'll be pulling. Grab behind both knees and pull. And then I can grab the heel and apply the knee ball or the heel hook. So again, he's got my leg trapped. My forearm on the throat and I come up to my other knee. Hit. Against his hips so he can't pull his knee through to get gone. Pressure and pressure and pressure. Throw this arm over and my leg over at the same time and sit on the hip. Here, sit down. Nice and tight. Grab both legs. Grab both legs. Not just one. Here because you're pulling against this and this leg's pulling away. And it's because there's pressure to pull both. Pull him up off balance, get him all crushed up. And then I grab the heel. Steering wheel, heel hook, knee ball. Okay, you've got the whole leg, or oh, even toe hold. See that one last time from another angle. Leg trapped. Forearm on the throat, put my knee against the body here. Throw the arm over and sit, and I try to go slow. So I'm coming over, so it comes back, and I sit to the hip. I grab both legs, roll back, grab the heel, knee ball. If you end up in a position where his foot's across you, this way, which sometimes happens, feet underneath here, and hip in. I'm sure that's another angle so you can see. Sometimes you spin to knee balls, and have people's feet across. You want they're like pointing straight to you in a straight line if you can do the knee ball here. But sometimes it's across. So I need, I need pressure this way. So I'm going to bring this behind. Scoot down. Make sure my hips are near his, his hip. I pull back and push my hips forward here. Some people say you do this to make the position stronger. You bring this behind. You don't. You do it when you're here. Toes are pointing across and you don't want to come in this way. You come this way. Here. In. Stay scooted down. You want his knee on your hips or on your belly. Push back and put my hips in. Here. It's a variation on the finish for the knee ball. Now let's have a summary of the half guard top position. We'll start by looking at the passing and the posture. First thing, three postures. Under the head, under the arm, under both arms, or arm over, tilt my hip and bend my leg and put my weight on it. The posture under the arm, under the head is the first thing I go for. He's getting on his side, he's going to be on his side straight away. He won't be flat on his back if he knows what he's doing. I'm going to hook, hook around his head, hook under his arm, drive my chest into his chest, keep my hips locked. He's going to flat onto his back. Get this shoulder in his face, get it in his throat, make it uncomfortable. If I'm going to pass, I'm going to hook my foot in, inside his thigh, pressure, 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 wiggle the other leg straight. Spread his legs as much as I can. Knees together and pass. Or grab his arm and sit through. If his other arm's bothering me, if he's pushing my knee, 
Here I come under his arm, grip together, flare my elbows, put my head on the mat, and then I either hook pass, or I, if his legs are high, I come up onto my feet, and I wiggle, and then I hook pass. Or, if he's still got my ankle trapped, I sit through and kick free. The third posture is with my arm over the other side. I like this when the guy gets an underhook here. I can pull him, stop him getting behind me. You need to underhook his leg. I can either just lift it up and drive under, stop pulling, push his leg off, he comes back up here. Or, he starts to hip out onto his side, and then I catch it there. Pull him on his back, pull on this, and wiggle my leg free. Pass that guard straight down here. So again, I actually get my arm underneath, either this way or underhugging the head as well. But I prefer this because I can pull his body around, pull his head back, pull on this as hard as I can, and shake that leg free to pass his guard. I can also pass by putting my knee on his chest. Again, that's done from the first grip. Put my hands down, my knee onto his chest, and I grip my hands in a chain grip here. I'm going to pull, I'm going to push with his knee and make it hard for him. Here, okay, make it uncomfortable. If he tries to bridge me, I can just scoot my hips back. Here, and then pass. And I use this other hook. I use this hook against his leg. Okay, he starts to go. I use this hook, and I just pass. If I just want to try and pass myself, i just put this foot here and just rip it free. Like I said, if he tries to bridge me, I use this foot here on his thigh. Here, and I stop. He's bridge, and I pass. All these passes work together. The hook pass is the basic pass, though. If any other ones don't work, go back to that. That's a summary of the passing in the half guard top. Now let's go over the submissions we've covered in the half guard top position. Again, pulling my elbow in, pressuring him, keeping my weight on it. I'm going to overhook his arm tight, grab his wrist, take it down, raise it up, and apply to more. If he grips on his uh, shorts, just rip it up, pin it, and down. If he tries to straighten his arm, here, I'm going to flare my elbow, put my chest on him, and then straighten it out here. If it carries on going, which it probably will here, I'm going to pin it, pin it down. Come underneath, keep this elbow in, keep both elbows in. Down towards his hip, and raise. If he straightens it even more, pull it back and go underneath his head. Put my head down on the mat. And then I'm going to pass his guard, either by coming up or just tucking here. Wiggle straight, pass, and choke. And then we've got the leg locks, either I'm under here, I'm under here, he starts to get on his side. I'm catching this, I'm catching this. He gets so far on his side, I don't really want to pass. Come up to my knee, hand on the head, step over, this way, knee ball. I've got this, but I managed to get flat on his back. Bring my arm inside, okay, inside this, create space. Hand down, shin in, tuck my other foot in, make sure that foot's tucked. Now I'm going to go this way, I'm going to come around, my knee's going to come up, I'm going to pull on this so my foot comes out. Grip, finish here, or finish here, or here. And the last submission is the third knee bomb. So I'm here, put my forearm on the throat, come up to my other knee, I'm going to throw this arm round, put my leg over, this is it. Here, grab his legs, pull back, and apply the knee ball. So basically when I'm in the half guard top, I can submit his arm and his leg. Both ones on the same side. That's a summary of the submissions from inside the half guard top. We've seen a lot of techniques on this tape. We've seen passes, we've seen sweeps, we've seen how to get posture, we've seen leg locks, arm locks, lots of different things. Now you've got to go out and train these moves. Don't just watch the tape loads and loads of times and think you get it. Don't even just practice the moves again and again and again by themselves in isolation and think you get it. The way to get these techniques is to spar. Spar from the half guard, just start in a position and work. Sometimes go light and just focus on one technique. Sometimes one guy go light and the other guy go heavy so the light guy can be
training him, okay, and let him do moves, talk him through things, not give him a lot of resistance. And sometimes you just spar all out. You just got to get into half guard and spar. That's it. Build the timing. Just knowing the techniques, knowing the mechanics isn't going to give it you. You need to build the resistance. You need to know when a guy moves one way, when he grabs your hand, when he grabs your leg, what you're going to do. Because if you just drill the technique again and again and again, the first time you try and do it against someone who's resistant, you're not going to be used to it. So just spar. Spar from the half guard, build the timing, get these techniques down. Thank you for watching the tape. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck with your training.